All right. As I mentioned before, the integral test does not say that the sum of the series equals the value of the improper integral that you convert the series into. But although the improper integral itself does not equal the sum, it is related to the sum and, in fact, gives us a way to approximate the sum of a series and, importantly, measure how good our approximation is. The idea is we approximate the sum of a series by adding up only the first n many terms of the series, like the first 10 terms, or the first 100 terms, or the first 1,000 terms. That is, we approximate the sum of the series by the nth partial sum of the series. In this case, the error of our approximation is simply the sum of all the remaining terms we did not add up as part of the partial sum, i.e. the sum of all the terms coming after the nth term. The sum of all these remaining terms is called the remainder, and the basic principle behind the integral test gives us a way to estimate this remainder. The estimation of the remainder goes as follows. Suppose the integral test indicates that a series converges. In this case, the remainder that is left over after adding up the first n terms, which we'll call r sub n, must be bounded by the following integrals. The integral of f from n plus 1 to infinity as a lower bound, and the integral from n to infinity as an upper bound. To understand why, let's take a look at the situation graphically. We want to estimate the remainder after adding n many terms, so I'm going to start labeling the x-axis here in n. Remember, the remainder is the sum of all the terms of the series that come after n, so starting from the n plus 1 term and going on to infinity. Like before, if we have a graph of the function f, we can visually represent the sum by Riemann rectangles of width 1, and for now, I'm going to make them left-oriented so their top left corner corresponds to the height of the curve at that point. Thus, the total area of these rectangles is the same as the remainder. If I now shade in the area that corresponds to the integral from n plus 1 to infinity of the function f, you can see pretty clearly that it underestimates the area covered by the rectangles, thus giving rise to the lower bound appearing in the estimate. Okay, but what about the upper bound? According to the remainder estimate, the integral from n to infinity is supposed to overestimate the remainder. But looking at the picture, it's kind of hard to tell if it really does. That is, it's hard to say if the blue area really is larger than all the red rectangles combined. However, once again, I can play the same trick with the rectangles that I used before. If I shift all of the rectangles to the left by one unit, thus turning the rectangles from being left-oriented to being right-oriented, you can see that they all fit neatly inside the blue region, which means, of course, that the blue area is larger. But we're not done yet. We can actually use this remainder estimate to squeeze out one more useful result about the true sum of a series. Remember that the remainder, r sub n, is just the sum of all the terms that are not a part of the partial sum, s sub n. Thus, the sum of both has to be the true sum, s. Therefore, I can convert these bounds on the remainder into bounds for the true sum of a series by simply adding the partial sum s sub n to all sides of the inequality. 